does an aftercooler make a difference for your air compressor at home? I've owned this 60 gallon, five horsepower, twin stage pump, upright air compressor for roughly nine years. Two and a half years ago, I installed an aftercooler right back here. I got a video here on my channel on the Hot Rod Reverend channel. That is the most watched video that I have. At this time, it has over 65,000 views, a lot of comments, a lot of likes. Today, we're going to use our infrared thermometer and take a look at the difference from what's going into the aftercooler and what's coming out of the aftercooler. I'm also going to give you an update on how this unit has done over the years. Specs on this thing, and to let you know, we have moved to California. We're no longer living in Ohio. Been here for about two years, and I kept it on the pallet, uh, bolted down. We are in a unit where we are renting this house in this garage. I do have it wired 220. The compressor has great specifications on it. And at 90 PSI, we've got over 1,500 cubic feet per minute as a 60 gallon tank. Now, this US General Harbor Freight unit that I picked up several years ago, the pump was made in Italy. Yep, right there, made in Italy. Electric motor was made in Mexico. A cable made in the good old US of A. And the tank, right here in the good old US of A in Ohio. Now let me give you some reasons why you need to add an aftercooler to your air compressor. Reason number one would be this. You're going to supply dry air to all of your tools and all of your equipment. This is critical if you're doing body work, you're spraying paint, especially even your, your air ratchets and uh, your die grinders and all your other tools. You need to have dry air for your tools. You will extend the life of your tools if you put an aftercooler on your air compressor. And yes, it even runs this blast cabinet extremely well. Sandblaster, uh, all kinds of air tools. Impact gun. <coughs> Ratchet. <coughs> air nozzle. My personal favorite, the air chisel. <coughs> Inflator gun. <coughs> Cutoff wheel. <coughs> Die grinder. <coughs> Body saw. Another personal favorite, the air punch and body flange tool. Now I know that thing's kind of loud, so what we're going to do, we're going to let it go through its complete cycle here, and then we'll shoot the gun when it's done with its cycle and see what the difference is between the outlet and the inlet. I do live in California and the ambient temperature today is in the high 90s, about 96, 97. So let's go over here and look at the air compressor and the temperatures. So this just kicked off. We'll aim it right here. 167 out of the tank. And a balmy 96, pretty much ambient temperature here. So let's do it again. Let's cycle it and see how hot uh, we can get this sucker right here. Now it's important to note, I get almost no moisture, no water out of the drain of the tank itself. Probably a tablespoon or two a month. I said a tablespoon or two a month over 10 to 15 hours a week of runtime. Okay, so we're running again and the, the kick in PSI is 125. So it's gonna go up to 155, but I do continuously cycle this sucker. Uh, it runs pretty good. Okay, it's just cycled off just the second time. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and shoot. Alright, we're at 184. And we're at 98 right here. Something's kind of neat to see is the air comes in the top of the aftercooler, then it works its way down before it goes out. So the very top's going to be the hottest. That tube right there is at 180. Tube down there is at 103. By the time it comes out, look where we're at at 97. You just can't beat an aftercooler. Now the way this is designed, there is a water trap here that 
as this hot air is cooled and comes through this pipe, it's going to come into the water separator where because of the cool temperature, the moisture will drop out. The droplets uh, will collect in here. Once we let this cool down a little bit, we'll show you that we can drain this. This is where all the moisture goes and very little, if any, gets into the tank. Reason number two to make this upgrade is to protect the life of your tank. Moisture, water is the killer of each air compressor tank because of corrosion from the inside out. Understand the principles of science of what's taking place. Friction in this motor, pulling air is heating it up very rapidly. For any air compressor that does not have an after cooler, all that hot air is going into your tank. As it cools in the tank, the moisture that this pump brought in through the air into this tank, that moisture will eventually drop out as it cools and it will come in the form, go from a, it, will, it will go from a vapor to a liquid and that moisture, that water will collect at the bottom of the tank. That's why every tank has a drain. That's why these things are recommended from the manufacturer. Drain them every day. Make this upgrade to your air compressor. Your tank will thank you for it. Now here's our water separator. I got a little bucket down here, hopefully to catch it. But uh, basically, put that and it just drains. And that's about all we've got after those three or four runs right there. Close that valve and we're good to go. Now, why is it that that water separator is able to get the water out so quickly and we just, we just ran this thing? Understand the principles here. Very, very hot air that contains moisture as a vapor goes through that cooler and as the air cools, that vapor forms into a liquid. The water separator catches that before it ever gets into the tank. It's huge. Reason number three to make this upgrade is because it's simple. It's easy to do. Anybody can do it if you just got some simple hand tools in the shop. If you want to know how to make this upgrade, take a look at my first video that I put out and dropped here on YouTube two and a half years ago. I'll have a link in the description for you. Watch that video. It's great. It'll give you a really good idea about the principles behind the aftercooler. It has the part numbers and everything else that you need. Make this upgrade to your air compressor today. Your shop will thank you for it. Now I just have a simple valve, ball valve here with a gauge and a regulator. And then I've got high flow and then two regular ports right here. Some people jaw and complain about this. This is wide open. It's just there because it's easier to mount this on top of this booger. So not an issue here. All the air is allowed to freely pass through here. I've had no issue with the fittings, fellas, at all. 10 to 15 hours a week, uh, a lot of use out of this. The last two and a half years, I've had no trouble, no leaks, no problems. Now guys, if you can't tell, I really like my air compressor here. I dare say I love it. The best modification I ever made was this upgrade to add an after cooler to my air compressor. I don't know what you have in your shop. I don't know what model you may have. If it's a horizontal, if it's another vertical upright, a lot of different models, manufacturers, there'll be differences in the fittings and everything else. But you'll not go wrong after adding an after cooler between your pump and your tank. Your air compressor will thank you for it, and so will each one of your projects, your tools, and all that you do in the shop. All right, guys, that's a wrap here today. I'm going to get back to work on the 1955 Ford Fairlane. Enjoy the channel. Search through the playlist. Glad to have you. Hope you subscribe. See you later.